What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are here at Lake Julian Disc Golf Course for another Formwork Friday. And today we're talking about hand speed because you can throw as hard as you physically want to. But if you can't get your hand going very fast, the hand is what's connected to the disc. So you've got to get your hand going fast or the disc isn't going to be going very fast no matter how hard you swing your arm. And hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate it demonstrate that today. So I have some teaching tools discs here. We just have a whole bunch of spores. Uh, the main difference between throwing hard and throwing fast is if you're throwing hard, you're exerting a whole bunch of muscle and you're muscling it up and powering it through and you can throw it fast by muscling up on a disc, but you're only going to be able to get so fast. If you can get your arm fast and your hand moving quicker, then you don't have to power very hard to get the disc to go very far. For example, here is a hard throw, but I'm not going to move my hand very fast. It seems like it goes a long way until you throw it right next to a fast throw. It was about the same amount of effort, maybe even less on the second throw, but because I'm able to get my arm to whip forward and my literally my hand to whip and snap and getting my hand to go really fast, I'm able to exert a lot more power and input that speed and spin into the disc that you're not always gonna get if you just power up on your arm. Fast arm. versus fast hand. See how much longer it's gonna just stay in the air and it's gonna keep powering through because you're giving it the speed, you're giving it the spin and discs are designed to do that. So if you can help the disc do what it's designed to do, it's gonna go a lot further for you. So by being able to move your hand really quick, you don't have to move your arm that fast. So you can have a much more slow and controlled style of throw, but you're gonna get the distance of powering up on your throw. So basically what I'm trying to do here is as I'm stepping into my throw, I'm making sure that I get my elbow forward. And if my elbow goes forward, then my hand is gonna be behind my elbow. So then as I accelerate through my shot, my hand literally has to whip past my elbow or else I'm gonna still hold on to the disc. Cause you can throw, right? Keep that hand here, and you're never letting go of the disc. So get into that spot and then that acceleration. It's literally this motion. That one right there. That's all hand speed. That's not arm speed. Cause it's coming from here down. So you have to get that moving or it's gonna be really hard to get the disc to go as hard and as far and as controlled if you just try to keep your arm straight and throw. Yeah, not the best. Versus bent arm and accelerating through the shot. Both those weren't great. Another demonstration, let's try straight arm. Same thing. Now bent arm. Maybe I should go to a different hole. Now as I'm walking up and I'm picking up all these discs, what I realize is that it's really, really difficult for me to aim without bending my elbow. So it sounds 
weird. It doesn't sound like it would make sense. But I am my shots by throwing with my hips, my shoulders, and my elbow. Predominantly the elbow if I'm trying to do slower run-ups or even standstills. The hips come into play for the weight shift. The shoulders come into play to have a brace. But really from the elbow down is where most of the spin and control comes from. So if you're trying to do these smooth controlled shots, especially in some wooded tight fairways, you need to be able to spin the disc and you don't have to throw it hard to get the spin required to keep it in the air. Let's try the same test again. Straight arm versus bent arm. Straight arm, and now this is gonna be bent arm. Can hit a gap. Straight arm. Versus bent arm. It comes out with a lot more explosiveness, a lot more speed, and a lot more control, which everyone that plays disc golf is looking for more speed, spin, and control. And if you notice yourself not really bringing the elbow through the shot, but keeping that arm straight, it's probably where most of your speed is going into is it's all in your body and it's you're not able to impart it to the disc. So we need to get the power from here to here. And it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I don't know if it's necessarily the best thing for your throw, but I've noticed with as much filming as I've been doing and looking at all the different throws, when I'm throwing putters or mid ranges and I'm trying to not throw them as hard, but put a lot of spin onto the disc, Typically what happens is I drop my elbow a tiny bit. So it basically brings the brace for the whip further or closer to my body, which is gonna let my hand whip faster a little bit more. But when I'm throwing more powerful shots and more drives with drivers, my elbow is still gonna be further out. So it's something to think about if you want to get a little bit more spin. Maybe think about bringing that elbow in just a tiniest bit. I'm going to try to demonstrate it. I don't know how exaggerated I'll have to do it for you to be able to see what I'm talking about on camera. But we're going to try it on this next hole. I'm going to throw kind of traditional backhand power shot versus what I do when I'm throwing slower speeds discs just to get all of the extra spin that they need. That's not gonna be fun to find. But I've noticed that I get my putters and my mid ranges almost as far as I get my fairway and distance drivers. And I think that's because I can't quite get the hand speed required to get the drivers as far. But I'm basically throwing putters with as much if not more spin at about the same speed as my fairway drivers. And so the putters are going really far for putters, but the fairway drivers are going about the same distance, maybe 50 feet further, which doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't make sense. And I still don't understand why, but I think most of it has to do with the launch angle of my drives and my release spin rates. I'm just getting a lot, so much spin off of these putters. Like these are, these are one speeds. Now they're stable one speeds, but they're still one speeds. So I have to spin them to get them to go anywhere. 
and thank you ultimate i can spin a disc and not throw it very hard so it's something that i'm still working on but spin gets you a lot further than power will at least spin can will get you a lot more controlled distance than power will now a spin can sometimes be the lack of spin can sometimes be mitigated by getting an overstable disc because if you throw really hard without a whole lot of spin you're giving it a lot of torque so you need something that's either going to be super 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 torque resistant or something that's overstable enough to fight out of whatever off-axis torque or or torque flip that you gave the disc and so it's you can mitigate it obviously you definitely don't have to get something as slow and as glidey but just by getting something super stable it'll fight whatever you try to throw into it but you're going to get a lot easier controlled distance by getting something a little bit slower a little bit glidier and then just spin it spin it as fast as it can go Try to get your spin rate up over a thousand RPMs and it'll go a lot faster or it'll go a lot further even though it's traveling at a slower speed. It's a bit of a tailwind so hopefully we can get some max distance rips with these. Normally super gummy plastic doesn't stable up like that but when you spin it all the weight goes out to the outside even more makes them more stable. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and buy spores. It is my preferred super slow disc. Um, it gives me some extra stability to help when I'm not quite getting the spin that I need to give it the stability, but it's not, it's not overstable. It's a stable to neutral putter, but because, of, because it's a one speed, because it's in the Neo soft plastic, you do have to spin it or it's going to become understable and it's just gonna kind of roll for you because it's a one speed putter. So getting whatever your one speed glidey putter might be, figure that out, go out and practice a couple times just using that disc or using whatever, whatever your slower glidey disc is. Practice getting the spin on your disc, practice getting your hand fast and you'll see market changes and drastic improvements on your total overall distance. If you enjoy content like this, please make sure to like the video. If you want to see something new, make sure to comment that down below and make sure to subscribe. It helps you out with all these subscriber-only giveaways and it definitely helps me. Until next time, see you out on the course.